the following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcast, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. And good morning to you. You're listening to the world-famous Butch and Bob Show right here on the Big Dog, W-I-F-O FM, 105.5 FM and Jessup Big Dog Country Radio. Two minutes after 8 o'clock on this Monday morning, the 10th day of February. And good morning, Bob. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You doing good? Yep. All right, you got headsets on this morning. That must mean we have somebody on the phone, right? It's Mondays with Meeks. We got Stephen Meeks on the phone. Stephen, how you doing today? Good morning, doing well. How about y'all? Doing well. You in Atlanta? No, sir, not this morning. I'm uh, around the farm this morning. We uh, recessed uh, or passed a resolution this w- uh, last week uh, on uh, more or less dictating the House schedule. And uh, we've adjourned this week for budget hearings, uh, which will take place all week long, working on the FY20 amended budget and the FY21 fiscal year budget. So we uh, decided to or pass a resolution and recess for hearings all week. So they'll be focused on that this week uh, in Atlanta. I was just curious, did you get out of there before the snow? My sister sent me pictures of the snow in Atlanta <laughs> this weekend. I was surprised. Yes, I certainly did. Uh, I was able to get out Thursday shortly before lunch. And, uh, of course, the storms moving across the state last week. Uh, we uh, I drove through uh, the majority of it north of Macon coming home, and it was, uh, it was pretty rough. And, of course, it came through. Uh, here later today, but uh, but yes, sir, I was able to escape, which is, you know, I, I guess today what the high will be, what seventy eight, and three days ago it was in the thirties. So I, I tell you what, the weather's uh, got everybody messed up. I think it's kind of crazy, but anyway, let's talk about the session again. The story, of course, is the budget. There's some tension currently between the House Speaker and the Governor, so. Are you feeling all that tension in Atlanta, or what's going on between the Republican Party? Well, I think it's uh, it comes down to priorities and, and what are we looking to do in this session. And um, I, there, there's obviously some tension that uh, that we're working through uh, in in the House when it comes to appropriations. And I know uh, Chairman Terry England uh, is working through trying to get. Uh, his subcommittee chairman to, to get all the information they can from budget heads to make sure that. Number one, we're spending taxpayer money uh, wisely, uh, meeting the needs of, uh, of Georgians, and, and two, and then, well, then thirdly, uh, looking at priorities that the governor has laid out. So uh, it'll be a week of uh, coming to the table and working through uh, those issues and, and those differences and uh, see where we go from here. We're, uh, we, we recessed for February the 18th, which is uh, a week from tomorrow, uh, and it's my understanding that by then we hope to be able to have uh, the FY20 amended budget uh, ready to pass and, and go to the Senate from there. So it's a lot of work to be done on the appropriations committees this week, uh, working through those issues and, um, and, and trying to get the FY20 budget amended, uh, finished up. Now, is this a normal process? Do they normally do this and take that time, much time off, or is this just a time off for everybody to get on the same page? What's going on? Well, I think it's I think it's a scenario that this is the first time um, in quite a while that we've actually had significant cuts um, in the budget, so it's taken a little bit uh, more time to make sure that we're getting uh, all the information that we need from the agency heads in order to uh, to meet the needs of, of Georgians uh, with balancing that with a, uh, a balanced budget. So, I mean, we didn't do it last year, but um, my guess is at some point in the past we've had to do it uh, in order to make sure we uh, we do it right the right way. Um, but um, but it's the, the commitment, I know, of the speaker and, the, and other leadership, uh, other folks in leadership to make sure that we get it done and um, spend Georgia, Georgia's money wisely. Are you hearing from the department heads? Or are they willing to make these cuts? Or are they fighting back saying they can't make some cuts? Is that the problem? What's going on with the budget? Well, I think that some of the uh, some of the methods hadn't been delivered to the appropriations committee. I think they had a lot of unanswered questions mm-hmm. uh, from previous budget hearings. Uh, so it's a chance for them to get agency heads back in and and uh, further clarify some issues of where uh, where we can cut or where 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 the where the fat is, so to speak, is if there's any left. And I know we've had significant cuts over the years, but in 
making uh, making some decisions and trying to look to areas that we can uh, we can trim from, but yet still meet the needs of uh, of the state agency. So I think it's an opportunity that we uh, that we get budget head uh, budget heads back in and and clarify some some of the uh, potential cuts and and see how we move forward. Stephen Butch Hubbard here. Um, wanted to ask you a question. You know, I usually hear about all these cuts during when you know we're going in fixing to go into recession that's what we do here in the south we're fixing to do something and uh we're fixing to go into a um, a recession or in, in a recession but uh the economy has been booming in georgia why is the governor calling for these cuts that uh the, the state legislature is having such a difficult time trying to to come up with well but uh, state economists are showing that uh, the numbers are slowing that the economy is slowing a little bit in georgia uh, so I think that we're taking a, a conservative approach to, to spending money and governing and how much we're spending, uh, given that we are mandated to do a balanced budget. And, and the budget is written off of projections, uh, not necessarily what is what is coming in at that time. Of course, as we through, throughout the budget process, as we near the end of the year, we, we know about what we've got to spend. But as we start looking forward, we also are basing those decisions off, off of some projections. And uh, state economists are saying that the economy is going to slow a little bit, and uh, and issuing some uh, uh, some caution in writing of those uh, of those budget bills. So I think that's the biggest issue. It's something we haven't dealt with in the past. Um, and talking to uh, to other members who have been there a little bit longer, I know that Chairman England is actually probably his first time as chairman, where we're actually making cuts to the budget and not enhancing some areas. Uh, that we uh, that we had to cut back during the Great Recession. Meanwhile, there's a lot of proposed legislation. One story that broke last week was the governor and the school superintendent, or yeah, the state school superintendent, Rich Woods, proposing to cut back on some of these state mandated tests. Uh, your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's a good move, and it's one thing that we continue to hear from uh, from teachers across the state and from from here at home and uh, and other districts, other communities in the district that. You know, we do need to take a look at these state mandated tests and make sure that we give teachers the opportunity to do what they do best, and that is teach. Uh, it's one of the things that, that, that has been my message, and uh, the governor's been saying that for the last several weeks as we take a look at how do we improve education in our state while reducing some of the, the bureaucratic red tape, so to speak, that teachers go through day in and day out, uh, and just give them the opportunity to teach instead of teaching to a test of, of giving the students every day the opportunity to learn and be successful in life. I mean, anything else we need to be aware of? What else is taking place? Well, a couple of things. Dual enrollment has gotten some attention over the past couple of weeks. A uh, hugely popular program uh, within the state and the technical college system, the Georgia and the high schools. Um, I think last session we talked about the need to put some guardrails uh, within uh, within that program to to. Uh, to keep the cost under control, it's one of the biggest ticket items in the budget. Uh, the, it's uh, it's projected to be north of uh, 100 million this year. Um, so we're trying to figure out, okay, what can we do to to put some guardrails on it and yet serve the serve the students uh, that are uh, utilizing these programs. And what we've looked at, and what the committee uh, committee has has considered. <laughs> excuse me is capping the hours at 30 hours uh, for dual enrollment. Uh, but yet with that, if you are going into a highly skilled area, it's a very long list of uh, specially skilled areas, then the number of hours that you are then eligible for actually doubles to um, another another 30 hours to doubles to 60 hours. Um, and in, in talking with uh, the members who were involved in the negotiation of, uh, of working through dual enrollment is that if you're currently in dual enrollment and you use up those 30 hours, there's also the hope grant that can then be accessed uh, or accessed in order to complete some of those programs, even if it may be some of your core programs. So I think we're trying to make, trying to take a look at it and, and see uh, what changes can be made to number one, put some guardrails on it so the cost doesn't get, uh, get way out of control and that we are able to uh, continue to offer those to students in the, in the state of Georgia. If you're just joining us on the phone with us, Representative Stephen Meeks, uh, again, 
Uh, broadband was talked about a bunch at the exit issues. I don't see a lot being talked about statewide broadband. Where are we standing? We've, uh, within committee, we've had a few discussions. Not a lot has taken place at this point. I think we still have to look for ways to encourage uh, deployment of broadband, and it's easier in metropolitan areas where obviously the, the population is much higher, more difficult when you get out into the rural areas of the state. Uh, we still got to look at a funding mechanism to encourage that. There's some money available from USDA rural development. Uh, and I understand uh, Gilmer County up in North Georgia recently received some money from that. But uh, it's one of those things we've got to continue to work on. It's, it's not a overnight solution, I don't believe, but it's a long term. And uh, we want it We want it done, and we want it done now. But it's, uh, it's going to take some time to make sure we do it correctly. As you mentioned, you're at the farm. You're going to stay at the farm all week. Are you going back to Atlanta anytime this week, or what's your schedule? Uh, probably we'll be in Atlanta one day this week. Uh, we had some previous engagements on the calendar that uh, we'll try to make a trip up for, but otherwise I'll be around and uh, moving around in the district. Uh, i got a couple of uh, speaking engagements that I'm working on uh, toward the end of the week, but uh, but we'll be around most of the week here. Um, if uh, if you need me, give me a shout, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to getting back to work and finishing up the amended budget and uh, moving on to uh, FY21 budget. So the session reconvenes February 18th, is that correct? That's correct. And the current calendar that we've worked toward, um, well, Tuesday will begin the 13th legislative day. Of course, crossover days is halfway the session. So the current calendar will take us through uh, day 28 being March the 12th, being crossover day uh, for this uh, legislative session. And then we'll finish up from there through uh, through our 40 days. And um we got a lot to do. We got a lot going on. As as you mentioned, there's uh, changes to the hemp legislation that we uh, that we need to do. That we've got to get out of uh, committee. We uh, convened the ag committee on uh, thir- on Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon late, and worked through some changes to that piece of legislation and uh, and many others going on. We've got some there's some uh, coal ash bills that need to be dealt with and uh, just a host of bills that get introduced every day. Uh, that we've got to work through and making sure that we're uh, passing good legislation and doing it the way that will uh, have the least impact on Georgians, but yet the, the greatest impact in public policy. And anybody listening and wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to go about that? Uh, uh, Atlanta office is now is, uh, 404-656-0117 and, and always uh, via email uh, at stephen.meeks at Georgia at house.georgia.gov. Uh, happy to uh, happy to see anyone who's making the trip up to Atlanta. Uh, we've had a good contingent from Wayne County and surrounding counties to come up over the last uh, 12 days, and uh, it's always always good to see folks from home. We're we're always excited to have that conversation with you about and uh, what's important to you and what's impacting you most and what you'd like to see done to make our state greater and better. Okay, Stephen, again, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to be with us every Monday. Monday's with the Meeks, again, a very popular program here on the Big Dog 105.5. And, again, appreciate your insight you and uh, have a great week. Thanks, you too. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, Stephen. WIFO FM in Jessup 105.5 on your FM Dial Big Dog Country Radio, world famous Butch and Bob show. 815. Well, we've got the basketball coach from Wayne County High School coming up next for the boys' team. He'll be in the studio in just about 90 seconds. Hi, good morning. Partly sunny, south breeze, highs mid 70s. Becoming mostly cloudy tonight. 20% chance of showers after midnight, low 60. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Slight chance of showers and thunderstorms in the morning, then a chance of showers in the afternoon, highs upper 70s. Wednesday, mostly cloudy, slight chance of showers, upper 70s. Thursday, showers, chance of thunderstorms. Georgia meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. Neesmith Chevrolet and the Wayne County Board of Tourism present Hog Jam 2020, February 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Entry fee $50 per Boer Gun Hunter. Children under 16 hunt free with a registered adult Boer Gun Hunter. Tournament hours run from Friday the 21st, 2 p.m. until Sunday, February 23rd at noon. $4,000 guaranteed payout. Prizes gun and bow, first place $1,000, second $500, third $250. Bonus category, biggest hog weighed in by 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday night. $100 bow and 
gun each night. The biggest hog killed by a hunter under $16, $100. Biggest hog killed by a female, $250. Payout based upon number of entries. You can hunt Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, or Tennessee where you have legal permission to hunt. For rules and more info, go to waynetourism.com or call 912-427-3233. Registration deadline, February 22nd, 6 p.m. Neesmith Chevrolet and the Wayne County Board of Tourism present Hog Jam 2020, February 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM in Jessa. Bob, another special guest here on the show this morning. Yeah, great news over the weekend. Again, both our boys and girls are going to host round one of the state playoffs here. But the boys were able to win the region championship. It's all about picking at the right time, Coach. But this was quite a feat to go in there to the Statesboro Gymnasium, a team that won 20 straight games during the season, beat us both times during the regular season. But I'll tell you, your boys played extremely well and pulled out the big 49-46 win and had to have it. Had to, had to be a great feeling, you know, hoisting that region championship trophy, you knowing it's back to back. Oh man! First of all, I'm a, I want to say thank you for having me on the show. I want to thank God for the opportunity. But um, this one was unbelievable, back to back. But just having you know those seniors that left last year, that you know started the culture, and for these kids, these juniors that came in as now seniors. It just made their job so much easier to learn from a group of guys that we had, and we believed the whole time. And like you said, just peeping at the right time. We told our guys that from day one, you know, it don't matter when. If we peep at the right time, you know, success will be at the end. So we were happy with this one. And B.J. Wright seems to be coming to his own. Like I said, this was a kid that moved in, mm-hmm. was not eligible until after the Christmas break, but um, you got him. And I tell you, he was hitting those NBA three-pointers Friday night. Uh, he's been a big impact player. What is six seven, six eight? What was this? Yeah, about six seven. Six seven. Six seven. I so. mean, he's a he's a force, and he's just a junior, right? Yes, sir. Just a junior. Um, came in. You now, know, where did he move in from? From Perry. Um, and he's related to somebody here in Wayne County, right? Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, he came to the great basketball program of the wars. That's right. So, yes, yeah. so he's here. He's in your program now. Seems like a good kid. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, we've been going in the right direction, like all the rest of our kids. Just making sure you just, you know, be a leader. And, you know, cause we got a whole lot of young guys, our sophomores. Our sophomores going to be special as long as we also have some freshmen that's going to be good. Um, so just being a leader and showing these kids, you know, some of the right things that we're doing in this program. You know, Shamar Taylor had a big night as well. He's had a big impact. Oh. Which, you know, his first year with you, didn't play last year, but he's in the – program this year and seems to be having a good year oh yes man we we was wondering when some of the rush was gonna come out and man he been peaking for the last five six games he been really like a leader on that floor and man it, it's been good to see him in his right form like he was his sophomore year so the brackets filled out wayne county boys are seated one get a four seed jones county the girls are seated th- uh number two they get a three seed union grove and they're trying to work out a doubleheader here Friday, but again, Jones County's trying to fight for Saturday. So I guess that'll all be finalized sometime this afternoon. Yes, sir. We're going to try to get in and negotiate something because for both teams, you know, you want to be able to go scout on Saturday. So we're going to try to get it in Friday. You know, it'll be best for the, you know, the girls and the boys to have that fan support on Friday night. Right. Be a big crowd on Friday. But as soon as we get the details, we'll have that information for everybody during the broadcast of the baseball game. Also have it here tomorrow on local sports. But everything should be finalized. But those are the matchups. What do we know about Jones County? Very special. Um, 18 and 10. Um, the whole starting lineup is over six feet three, six three point guard. The rest go down the line six five, six six. So, you know, we got something coming in on Friday. You know, so the so, of the Giants are coming. Yes, in. <laughs> yes, yes. They are huge. So we're gonna do what we can. We're gonna get in the lab. Me and my assistant coaches. You know, they've been so special this year. My assistant coaches. You know, so basically we'll get in the lab and see what we can do with them. Again, you're doing a great job this program. You know, something that sticks out, you know, i never forget it. Last year after you won the region championship, you brought your the school board, had the team come, you know, to be recognized. And one of the board members asked one of your players, what does Coach Ray teach you? And I'll never forget it. He didn't even hesitate. He stood up there and he said, ladies and gentlemen, what Coach Ray teaches us that eventually that basketball is going to go flat and you have to have an education. Without an education, you don't have anything. I was like ready to give a standing ovation. I, was like, oh, God. I said, for a kid, to, for a kid to say that, I, you know. But 
I, that's what I've been impressed with. I said, yeah, discipline. You know, the kids know they have to toe the line and do certain things to be in your program. You also have them as community-oriented. They're out there doing civic duties, um, you know, charity work, things like that. So just talk about that approach, you know, what, what you try to instill in your kids besides basketball. I think from day one when I first took over the job, that was my main focus. Um, yes, we were coming in off of, you know, a losing season, but I didn't come in it with just thinking about winning games. I told the guys from day one, if we do the right thing on and off the court, that great things were going to come our way. And that's what the success have came from, these kids. You know, there are kids at the end of the day, but just trying to do the right thing and trying to do the right thing in the classrooms as well. And just having, you know, the board and our administrators stand by, you know, allowing us to do great things and also their parents. So we've been blessed in that avenue to do the right thing and try to get some reward from doing the right thing. And again, we don't want to oversight the girls. The girls have had a tremendous season. Oh, Kayla Hobbs does a tremendous job of that yes. program. Again, they've only lost twice. Uh, again, you know, mm. hate to harp on the men in the striped jerseys, but <laughs> it looked like two different, both officials, I mean, the fishing, the officials were the same for the boys and girls game, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it looks like they called a totally different game in your game than they did the girls game. The girls we, game looked like you couldn't touch anybody. I mean, <laughs> as soon as Taryn Ward breathed on somebody, they called a foul. But oh, in, yeah, in the it boys was, game, it looked like they let y'all play a little bit. Yeah, I think it was a dynamics. And the girls have played so well this year. And, you know, like you said, congratulations to Coach Hobbs and her staff for what all they have done this year. And, but we had the same referees that Wednesday night, and we filed out like three guys. New Hampshire filed out like four guys. So I totally understand when I just hate when the referees put it in their hands about deciding a game, right. and it was totally ugly. You, know, you, see, you see in all sports, I tell it all the time, nobody's coming to watch the referees. I know. But for I sometimes know. these guys, they, they want to be part of the show. So it's kind of disappointing, but something that, Every coach has to deal with, but I tell you all the time, coaches, they're based on wins and losses. I mean, their mm -hmm. job's on the line, yes, so that's, yes. that's what bothers me. Sometimes yes. they impact people's lives. <laughs> you're, right. you're absolutely right, and, and, and that's the thing that, and I talk to the reps all the time down this way because we let them know that when we go to Atlanta in the state tournament, like we come in this year, those refs don't call like that. Right, they let them and, play. and they let them play up there. So we're not used to it. So we get to start playing those guys. And we saying, oh, this a foul. No, they looking at, no, this ain't, this ain't a foul here. Right. Continue to play. So that's the dynamics of how, like you said, about how the refs is so different from here in uh, North Georgia. Right. Yeah. Well, Coach, one of these days we'll have AI refs out there <laughs> you will call it strictly in zeros and ones and so we won't have to worry about it right <laughs> yes sir yes sir yes sir golly well they're trying robots this year in spring training for baseball so i don't know, <laughs> I don't know how robots would work in basketball but i mean oh, it, man. So let's see how that goes this year in spring training but let I mean, me uh let me read a couple of texts that's come in coach okay, okay? um i gotta get close because <laughs> okay okay <laughs> I says, uh, Coach Ray has been has built and building this program for four years. Coach Ray, Coach Tucker, and Coach Mosley are the best in the state. <laughs> exclamation, exclamation, exclamation! All right, team of brothers. Isn't that good? T O B. Yeah, T O B. Team of brothers, and there's one more that's come in. And let me get up to it. It says. Is there anything that we can do for the basketball teams? Is anyone helping? I know football and baseball get community help. I am proud of that. But how can we help the basketball program at Wayne County High School? <laughs> Tell them I want to thank them for that. Um, the support. We get some support. We get some support from our fans. We get some support from churches. Um, we get support from our administrators, like I said, our board. So we'll be happy to, you know, to get some, some more support on the basketball, the girls and boys program. But we are thankful. And to get in touch with us, if, you know, me or Kayla Hobbs for that. <clears throat> and they left out Coach Hilton. They left out Coach Hilton. 
And Coach Schultz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best way sports come to a game is support them this, this weekend, either Friday or Saturday. I know. I know. Uh, fill, fill that gym and cheer yeah. on the Jackets. Yes, yes. Got to get that student body there. And the doubleheader Friday would be sweet to have both the nice. girls and boys game. Nice. I said all the fans could come, pay one price, get in there and watch both games and you know, hopefully get two wins and move on. I said, I guess if we win, we get to host the second round as well. Is that correct? Yes. First yes, two rounds yes, at home, yes, and then, then they start moving around. But, mm-hmm. again, the bracket looks good. You, I'm sure you looked at the bracket. Or are you looking, are you looking ahead, or are you just concentrate on Jones County? It's one game <coughs> at a time. Where's the University of Buford at? But our side no, 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 no. Our <laughs> bracket, I, I really do believe we got the hardest bracket. The hardest. To try to, because right now we got a jones county team that anywhere else can be a number one they had the hardest region this whole year in 5a with eagles landing and dutchtown being in that region eagles landing was ranked number one in the state about all year and dutchtown was ranked number three and then second if we win we fortunate to win against jones we have a great team coming in. You're talking about the Buford, but see, the Shore has been the number one team over in that region the whole oh, year. Right. And Buford beat them by two points in the region championship. So in the second game, if we fortunate to win, we'll have a great Cedar Shores coming in here on the second game in the Sweet 16. That'll be wild. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, Coach, I just wanted to have you in here to congratulate you and the team for the great showing Friday night over in Statesboro. Kind of a shocker. I mean, I, I have to say I was you know, kind of surprised because we all know about the legendary Coach Hill. Uh, tell people he's like Dick Clark. He never ages. Oh, I mean, man. he's amazing. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's, he looks the same as he did 40 years. Yes. He's been coaching for. I, I'll never he put said, me out my senior year. The other night I talked to him. I said, Coach, are you ever going to retire? You've been doing this 40 years. He said, well, I just enjoy it. I said, yeah. okay. So, <laughs> but he's won several state championships. It has his team ranked in the top five again this year. But to go over there and beat him at their home gym, that was quite a feat, Coach. So hats off to you and your staff and the kids. Again, great story. Back-to-back region titles for the boys' varsity basketball program. The girls are ranked number five in the state. They've only lost twice, so they'll have a nice run as well. So hopefully both teams can make a nice run and continue this season as long as it lasts. I sure appreciate it. Appreciate, appreciate these seniors. But I appreciate well. what you're doing as far as, like I said, the discipline, you know, instilling these kids, civic-minded education, because it's, you know, that's why they have no pass, no play. You don't pass, you don't get to play. Know, right? <laughs> and it, like he, but when he stood up and said, the basketball is going to go flat. If I don't have an education, I don't have anything, I was just, you know, amazed that a kid took that from, you know, your mouth and learn that life lesson. So that's one lesson that all kids need to learn. Mm-hmm. You know, you can only play sports for so long. And you are <laughs> Eventually, <absolutely> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, they say father time catches up with everybody. Well, what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Coach, again, congrats on a great season, and we'll look forward to hopefully Friday, Saturday at home against uh, Jones County. Right. Says, well, I said, we'll have the details tonight on during the Bellers basketball game. Also have the details all this week here promoting the game and get everybody there Friday or Saturday for the big game. Okay. Last, I want to shout out my senior man uh, we have nine we have Trey Chancey we have Jakari Slay we have Ryan Moore we have Shamar Taylor we have Dre Johnson we have Cam William we have TJ Ellis we have JC Williams and we have Steve Pina this has been an amazing senior bunch and we're just looking forward for this thing to keep going congrats again appreciate it coach all right thank you and I want to talk to Bob just for a moment um, so you can go or you can sit around and just hang out, Coach. It's up to you. <laughs> oh, got to get to work. Got to get to work. Got to get to work, huh? Let go first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, and since you get those luck, details, Coach. let us know. We'll pass it along. All right. Big Bell Country Radio, WIFO, 105.5 FM in Jessup. What do you mean you tell me you didn't watch any NXL fo- fo- football this weekend? I didn't watch any NXL. Didn't you know Georgia's quarterback, Aaron Murray, was a starting quarterback for Tampa, the Tampa Vipers? I just, he had a terrible I, game. I can't he had pull, Bob. Yeah. Clay Travis made a good point. Some of these guys haven't played an NFL game for three, four years. They've been on practice squads for the whole time. So, you know, yeah. I, like I said, he was impressed with the, you know, the, the level of play. I'm sure it'll get better. But I just, I can't get into it. You know, I, I, I was... Watching, I was somewhere, somebody had the game on. I think I saw Jerry Glanville coaching the team. Is yes, that correct? Yes, Jerry Glanville was, like, was the uh, defensive like, coach for... Uh, do, 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 okay, so for he's the, not the head coach. He's no, just he's a there. defensive coach. Actually, he was a defensive coach for one of the teams. It was either for 
for uh, Tampa or the team they were playing. The team was winning. I think, the, yeah, the, it, kept it, showing it, was the, it was the other team. But, it was uh, the other team. I just wonder if he's leaving tickets for Elvis like he used to do in Atlanta. Yeah. But I, one of the reporters was kidding with him and said, you've been coaching for 80 years now. And that was this point. He wasn't wearing black, but I, I guess the team's colors weren't black because he yeah. always was the man in black. But I looked up there and said, is that Jerry Glanville? That's Jerry Glanville. It was Glanville. Jerry Glanville. Oh, sure. Yeah, it was Jerry Glanville out there coaching the defense for, I can't even remember the team. Yeah, I saw Bob's Tampa. team's coaching team, Jim yeah. Zorn's coaching So they got some, you they know, got big some, time. No. And they got the top broadcasters for Fox right. out there and, and ESPN. You know, they got money behind it, but yeah. I just... Uh, but I mean, what they did different this time, uh, McMahon said, what we're doing different this time than we did several years ago with the XFL is we're making it about football, not all the... You know, he basically came in with the XFL several years ago and tried to make it a WWE event with all the, the, the spectacle around it. Now it's aimed at the product itself, football. And they've made some rule changes, which are, are I like, fun to I like, watch, yeah, let I like, me tell you. I like the kickoffs. The kickoffs Where the are kicker's great. by himself and everybody's back there and they're yeah. all lined up and they can't, they can't, they can't move advance until he catches, catches the ball. I kind of like that. And he keeps that 30-yard sprint down because that's where right. most of the con- uh, concussions right. happen. But you still have the possibility for a run back with, uh, right. for a touchdown, and that that's good. I did like that rule change. And there's only 25 seconds between plays. Right. And the play continues to – the clock continues to run um, even if the um, if the ball is um, uh, uh, is is not caught but like goes I, out of bounds. But like I told John this last say, I prayed every year that Landry Jones would get cut by the Steelers because he was terrible mm-hmm. and now he's terrible in the XFL as well. <laughs> I don't. Want, I don't want to watch Landry Jones. But they do have some good rule changes. You can tell they put a lot of thought and effort into trying to make the product about football, make it more exciting, make it more fun, make it where it moves faster and and not so much delays in it. Um, I wish them success. But I it's, really. It's do. all by viewership and putting people in the stands and the, yeah. the stadium. I saw it was. Three quarters full. I mean, yeah. it was pretty full. And so they do have the TV contracts. They have the TV, which right, that's a lot of money. And like you said, world. you got the announcers that are on board with it. So maybe it will succeed. I, mean, I hope so. And they and they limited it to eight teams. And you know, the thing about it is, I was all excited before the first game because uh, I was reading um, uh, uh, some some you know, articles about each one of the teams, and they were talking right. about the the the, the, the Tampa Bay uh, uh, Vipers and Aaron Murray. I said, Oh, good, a, a Georgia. Uh, uh, you know, he. You know, he had more uh, touchdown passes in the SEC than any other SEC quarterback. Oh, he had a great college career. More oh. touchdown passes than any other SEC quarterback in the history of the ACC, uh, SEC. And I said, yeah, this is going to be my team. Yeah. You got Aaron Murray out there. They're the closest team to us. <laughs> so they're in the South. You know, they're not oh, in right. Georgia, but at least they're at least they're in the South. And uh, I said, they're going to be my team. And I start watching it, and it's, it's, it's two interceptions. It's a fumble. Yeah. Uh, but the problem that Aaron had was his offensive line. He uh, was just getting overwhelmed. Uh, I mean, uh, they, they, they got to protect him. They put the backup quarterback in there. He's one of those um, uh, quarterbacks that can uh, throw some, uh, uh, a few quick passes, but he can really run. Okay? And uh, so uh, they put him in starting the second half some. Then they put Aaron back in. But it was just a rough game for Aaron. But the thing about it is they were just talking about that, that that Tampa had the talent, and they just let an egg. I hope they come back this next week and do better. I uh, pulled one for him. I said, great kid. Yeah, great kid. All right. Anything else? No, just baseball tonight. Like I said, 550 pregame, uh, 6 o'clock first pitch, and we should have the details of where the basketball games or We know where the basketball game is going to be. We'll just have the hopefully the doubleheader Friday lined up by the South playoffs. Yeah, so. So the Wayne County High School baseball team is playing who, where, how, what? Playing Brunswick High School at Brunswick at their new facilities. I think it's a three-year facility. It's right there behind the school. They have their own field now. Right behind Brunswick High right, School. Right Do you go Brunswick in off Altama? You're asking me for It's George. the main drag that goes right down there. It's like, you know, eight lanes long, wide. Haber, Brunswick Haber. High on one side and the, and the is high Is it Habersham? Habersham. Habersham. Oh, you go down Habersham, Habersham. behind Habersham. the school there. There you go. Okay, you go by Church Habersham. Over. Okay. All right, Bob. Have a good I, I day. I can't believe you're asking me directions. <laughs> I, you think wrong, I was born after all these years. I get lost on Cherry Street. What's going on? 835, 105.5 FM and Jess at Big Dog Country Radio. World Famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply. Located on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup, where the builders buy Murphy Builder Supply. And also brought to you by Nips Car Wash. 
The rain's moved out. You got a dirty vehicle. Head on down the uh, Nips Car Wash located on 301 South, just past McDonald's there on the left hand side. Automatic car wash. The world famous Butch and Bob Show.